My name is Albert and today I'll be going through the cable and harness environment. Okay, and as usual, we're going to start a new part. So on the top left of our screens, we can hit the new button. Then here we'll create a standard IPT. Hit the create button. And what we'll do here is we'll create a 2D sketch. So we can hit the start 2D sketch button. After doing that, we're going to select this XZ plane. I'm going to rotate my view cube so my top is orientated correctly. And over here, I'm going to start a center point rectangle. So a two point center rectangle. I'll choose a center and I'm going to go out 300 millimeters, tab 300 millimeters. I'll hit enter. Then I'll hit finish sketch. I'll roll my mouse wheel back. Then I'm going to run an extrusion on this profile over here. So I'll hit E on my keyboard, shortcut. And then over here, this guy, I'll make, make this guy 200. Okay, 200 is a bit too high. I'll make this guy, let's see, 50. Okay, 50 is perfect. I'll say OK over here. And then I'm going to run the shell command. So in the modify panel, I'm looking for shell. I'll remove this top surface over here, or that top face there. And then the thickness for this object here, I'm going to place at five millimeters. Then I'll say, okay. Then I should have the shape of here. Now, the next thing I'll do here is I'm going to create points on my object. So I'm going to select this face on the inside here by going start 2D sketch and selecting this face here. And then again, I can't see what's happening. So I press F7 on my keyboard to slice graphics. And now I'm just going to project this face inside here. So I'll click on that face there. I'll hit escape. This face now has got these projected lines. And then what I'll do here is I'm going to create some points. So four points on this object. So I'll go in under the create panel. I'm looking for point. I'll click on point over there. I'm just going to place four points. One, two, three, four. I'll hit escape to close that command. So now I have four points in this object. I'll hit F7 again, just so you can see those four points. Press F7 again to slice my graphics. Now what I'll do here is I'm going to run a line command between each one of these points. So I'm going to click on line. And before I do anything to this, I'm going to first set this to construction. So I've got the line command active. And this format tab construction over here is also active. I'll now place my line between each one of those points there. I'll hit escape. So now I should have one segment, two segments, three segments. This guy, this last line over here is sitting at an angle. So I'm just going to use my horizontal constraint to constrain this line itself to be horizontal with the other points. Then I'm just going to press F7 here to slice graphics so you can see this a little bit better. So I got that line going through one segment, two segments, three segments between each one of those points. 
And now I'm going to run an equals constraint to make sure that this line here is equal to that line and that line there is equal to this line over here. So I'm going to say equals. This line must be equal to this. And this line here must be equal to this line here. I can then hit escape. Then on the bottom right here, I can see three dimensions are needed. So all I need to do here is I'm just going to hit F7 to slice graphics. Click on the front of my view cube here, or the right side of my view cube. And I'm just going to add my horizontal constraints to constrain this point here, horizontal to this vertical line here. And then I'm going to add a vertical constraint between this horizontal line here and this line here in the middle. So I click on my horizontal constraint. That point over there and that midpoint of this vertical projected line must be constrained vertically. And the next constraint over here will be my vertical constraint between this midpoint to that second segment, that midpoint to the midpoint of my project of my projected line to that point there. Now on the bottom right here it says I need one more dimension. This dimension here will be the length of these segments here. All three of these segments are equal. So I can say dimension. I can select that segment there and I'm going to make its length 100 enter. Okay, 100 is too long. Let me change it to something like 50. Enter. Okay, 50 is perfect. Now I'm just going to select these lines here on the outside, the projected lines. Now I'll just set those to construction. To construction. Then I'll hit finish sketch. Now all I should see over here are my four points and those projected lines. Now what I'll do over here is I'm going to run my whole command. So whole and the placement here is from sketch automatically. It's already picked up all four of my sensors. The size of this hole I'm going to set to something like, uh, let's make this guy three millimeters. Three millimeters should be fine. I should make this something like 10 millimeters. Okay, yeah, 10 millimeters is perfect. And then the termination here, I'll put this at through all. So it's cutting through my entire object, going out and into the outside. I'll say okay over here. And then what I'll do here is I want to create the same holes, but on this face over here. I'm not going to say start 2D sketch and sketch those points out unless I wanted them to be unique. I'm just going to run a mirror command to mirror these holes here to the right hand side. And how I'll do that is I need a mid plane between this face here and this face here. So I can just click on my plane option. I'm not going into this menu here. I'm just clicking on the plane option there and I'm selecting that face there and this face over here. And automatically that's going to project, well, it's automatically going to create a mid plane between two planes. And now I can run my mirror command. So inside the pattern, I have mirror. I can select my hold. It's automatically picked up all these holes already because all these holes were created at the same time. Then mirror plane will be this plane over here, right in the middle. Remember, you select a plane on its edge and not on its center. I can say OK over here. And then now that's created these holes on the right hand side. Now the next thing I can do here is I can just right click on my work plane in my model browser. I'll turn the visibility off. Now all I can see is my holes on this part. 
Now that I've done that, what I want to do here is I'm going to say start 2D sketch on the surface over here. So right on the top there, I'm going to start a 2D sketch. I'm going to rotate this object so my tops align correctly. And just so you guys can see, I'm going to create this line between that edge there and this edge over here. So I'm going to click on top over here. I'm going to say project geometry. And then I'm going to set this projected geometry here to construction. So I'll select construction. Then I'm going to project this line, this line, and this line here at the bottom. So I should have three lines that are being projected and already set to construction. Then I can just deselect this construction and I can click on line. I can go from this line here at the top all the way down to the bottom here. I can select that. I can hit escape. It says here one dimension needed. I can run my dimension command from this line over here on the left hand side to the line I've just created. Move my mouse up. I'll change this direction here, well, this distance there to 100. Enter. I can say finish sketch. Now I have the sketch sitting on top of this object like that. What I'll do here is I'm just going to run a rib command. So rib. And then inside here it's using the first mode, so normal to sketch plane. And the thickness here I'll set to something like 5 millimeters, And that's in both directions, left and right, so symmetrically. I'll say OK over here. Then I have something like this. Now the next thing I'll do here is I'm going to say start 2D sketch and I'll select this face here on the inside. So I'll select that face there on that rib we just created. I'll press F7 to slice graphics. And then I'll run my project geometry command again. So project geometry. Then I'll set this to construction. Now what I'll do here is I'm going to project this face over here. Select that face to project. Then I'll hit escape. Now I'm just going to create a point over here so create a point anywhere inside here I'll hit escape after creating this point here I want to constrain this point here horizontally to the midpoint of this vertical line and vertically to the midpoint of this horizontal line over here so I can start off my I can start up my horizontal constraints from that point there to the midpoint of this line over here. And I can add my vertical constraints from that point there to the midpoint of my horizontal line. It says there on the bottom right, fully constrained. I can hit escape. Then I'm going to hit finish sketch. And I should have just that one point inside there. Now I'm going to run the whole command to cut a hole on that point there. And the size of this hole here, I'll just leave at 10 millimeters as well. The termination here, I'll change that to 2. So termination 2. Where is it terminating to? I want it terminating on this back face over here. I'm happy with that guy there. I'll hit OK. 
Then the next thing I want to do here is I want to create, so this will be my base component here, my base part. So what I'll do here is inside my model browser, it's got the name here. So it's part 27. I haven't saved this yet. And then below that, it's got the solid bodies folder. I'm going to expand the solid bodies folder. I'll change this solid here. So this object here, I'll change its name there with one single click on the name, then another single click on the name. I'll change the name here to base. I'll click away. Now, I'm going to say start 2D sketch. I'll select this face here on the inside, the one with the four, four holes on it. I'll select that face there. I'll press F7 to slice graphics. I am then going to project geometry, the geometry of this hole over here. And then I'm going to say circle. I'll choose the center point of that circle. I'll go out and this distance here, this radius here, I'm going to set to something like 10 millimeters enter. Then I can say finish sketch. And then after doing that, after setting that to 10 millimeters, I'm going to create myself a extrusion. So I'll hit extrusion. So extrude. I want to extrude this profile here on the outside and the center profile there. So I get one cylinder being extruded off of that. And the distance for this, I'll set to something like, let's see, let's make this guy five millimeters. So extent, I'll set that to five. And before I hit OK over here, I'm just going to make sure that this mode here is not sitting on join, but it's sitting on this new solid. I'll hit OK. And by changing that to new solid, the name over here in my solid bodies folder has now changed to two with two different solids inside there. So the base is one solid and that extrusion is also one solid. Then the next thing I'll do here is I'm going to say start 2D sketch again. But this time around, I'm going to select the surface inside there. So that back face of the cylinder. I can select it like that. Or if you're having difficulty selecting that, you can right click on your base and you can turn the visibility off. And all you'll see is this object here but just make sure you are selecting the back of that object. I'll turn the visibility of the solid back on. I'll just say start 2D sketch, and then I'll select that surface there. And in this case here, yeah, I'm just gonna say project geometry, and I'll project this existing circle over there. I'll hit escape, finish sketch, and then I should see that yellow projected line on the back of the surface here. I can run my extrusion again. So extrude, there's only one profile available. This distance here, I can set to something like 10 millimeters. And I'll also make this a new solid. Put that option there, I'll hit okay. Now that I've done that, what I'll do here is I'm just going to quickly use this combine feature over here. So combine and the base component will be the front of that circle there. And I'm combining this too. So my tool body will be that object there at the back. Or I could just select those two solids off inside my model browser. I could leave that option at join. I can say, okay. Now all that's left is just this one single solid body and this one single solid body there. So my base and the solid two. 
I'm going to rename the second solid here to connector. Enter. So I'm just renaming that to connector. And then what I'll do here is I'm just going to say start 2D sketch again. And I'll select the front face of that connector. I'll press F7 to slice graphics. Going to rotate my view cube here so it's orientated correctly. And then I'm just going to set this guy here. So inside the format tab, I'll set that to construction. Then I'm going to click on this project geometry. I'll select this edge over here. Just to project that edge, I'll hit escape. Now I have a center point on this object. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to create a point over here. So in the create panel, click on point. Then I'll place this point anywhere over here. Just not on top of that circle there in the background. Then after doing that, I'm just going to add a horizontal constraint between this point here and that center point over there. I'll hit escape. Now it, I require one more dimension. So I'm just going to say dimension this point over here to the center point there. Then that spacing there, I'll set to something like, let's make this five millimeters. Okay. Then we can hit finish sketch. Let me just click on the corner of my view cube over here. Rotate to front. There we go. Now that I have that guy there, I'm going to run another hole command. So hole. And now the size of this hole here, I'm going to set to, let's make this guy three millimeters. So three millimeters. And then right now it's looking for a termination. I could say through all. This will go through my entire part here, ignoring the solid that's base over here. So it's only going through this component. And then the termination here, I'll set to distance. And this distance here, I'm going to set to 2.5 millimeters. That's going to go in 2.5 millimeters. And then the drill point over here, I'll set that to flat. I'll hit OK. Then after doing that, I only have one hole here. I want to have two holes, another one on this side here. So I'm just going to use this circular pattern. So I can click on circular. I can choose this hole here. And then I'll select this option here to choose my rotation axis. And the rotation axis will be that outside surface there. going to create six of those holes along here. I just want two of them along 360 degrees. So I get that. Then I'll say OK. Now what I'll do over here is since I already have this base over here I've created and a connector over here as well as this hole, I'm just going to hit Control S on my keyboard to save this part. And this guy I'll just call my base and connector. So base and connector, I can hit save over there. And now the last thing I want to do here is I'm just going to go into my manage tab. In the manage tab over here, I'm going to hit this make components. It's under the layout panel. So make components, I'll select this component here and that component there, or I can just select them from my model browser. So the base and the connector. Then over here, it's going to ask me what's my target assembly name. I'll say base and connector. Yeah, that's fine. Template here. Remember, you can click on the sheet over here to choose your template, but I'll leave this as default. 
target for the assembly. I'm happy with that. BRM structure, I'm happy with that. Next. Then over here, again, I can choose the BRM structure for individual elements inside here. I'll leave those as is. I'll hit OK. Now this has sent me into my assembly environment. I can click on the corner of my view cube here. I can see here's my base component. And then here is my connector component. I only have one of these guys here. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to select this component. This guy here is grounded. It cannot move. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to look through this menu here and I'm looking for this grounded option. I'll deselect that. This now allows me to move this component out and place it at a different location. So now that I've taken that component out of that hole there, I'm going to double click on this component. This is going to send me back into the parts environment or my IPT environment. And what I'll do here is I want to create two points on this object. So I'm going to go into this point option here in the drop down, so that arrow pointing down. Then I'm looking for center point of loop of edges. I'll select that and it's going to look for this loop of edges here. I'll click. It creates that point there. I hit spacebar on my keyboard. I click on that loop of edges there again and that generates my two points. Then the next thing I want to do here is I also want to create some points sitting offset from the surface 10 millimeters. So in order for me to create a point 10 millimeters away from the surface here, I'm going to have to run this axis over here under my work features panel. I'll select axis. The axis I'm looking for is the center of this face over here. Or I could go in the drop down here and I could look through the different options here. So through revolved face or feature would be that option there. I'll select that surface there. Now I'll get this axis running through this object. Now the next thing I'll do here is I'm going to create a plane. And this plane here will be on this face here. I'm going to left click and drag to create an offset plane. And that distance there will be 10 millimeters enter. That offset plane is the same as clicking on the drop down here and looking for offset plane, which would be the first option there. Now that I have these, this axis here and that plane there, I'm going to use my points again and I'll select where I want to create a point where this plane intersects this axis over here. Then you'll see inside here it's generated a point. Or I'm just going to hit undo here just so you can see. I could also click on the drop down and I could say intersection of plane slash surface and line. It's the same option there. It's looking for a line and a plane. Now that I have that, I'm just going to hide this plane and this axis here. Those are my third work point. I've got my first work point, my second one and my third one. This third work point here has consumed that axis and this plane. So I'll hold control to select both of those. I'll right click and I'll turn off the visibility. Now I just have a point sitting 10 millimeters away from that face over there. Now, what I want to do here is I want to create a pin over here under this harness tab. If you don't see that harness tab over there, you can right click on your ribbon and then inside here you can say show panels and then inside there there should be this harness option you can turn that on so you right click show panels you look for harness you can turn that option on now you'll see over here it's got pin pin group and properties 
I'm just looking for this pin over here. I'll select pin. I'll choose this point here. That will be my pin 1. I can say OK. Then I can select that point over there. This will become my pin 2. I'll say OK. Then I'll hit escape. I only want to have two pins. The first pin and the second pin. This third point over here that's floating out there, I'll leave that as is. And I'm just going to delete my work point 1 and my work point 2. Hitting delete on my keyboard just to get rid of those. So now I should have work point 3, pin 1, and pin 2. I can hit Control S to save this part. I'll say OK. Then I can hit Return. Now this sends me back into my assembly. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to drag in. I only have one of these connectors. I want to drag in eight of the connectors to go into one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So these four holes over here. So I'm going to click and drag on this connector. Bring that into my viewport. Let's go. Left click on the connector. Drag that into my viewport. Let go. I want to create eight of those. Five, six, seven, and eight. Now that I've created all eight of those guys there, these work planes here are getting in my way. I don't want to see these work features here anymore. So what I'll do is I'm going to go into my view tab. So the view tab over here, and I'm going to go to this object visibility on the left hand side of my screen. And I'm just going to turn off my user work axes and my user work planes. Now all I can see are just my work points that I've created on these parts here. I'm happy with that. All I need to do now is I need to constrain all eight of these objects here to these holes. So I'm going to go back to my Assemble tab. I can click on Constrain, Shortcut C on your keyboard. And here I've got my different constraint types. I'm looking for this insert constraint and with that insert constraint active I'm going to select this back edge of the circle so where that cylinder meets the cylinder and I'll place it on that edge over there I can hit apply then I'll select that edge and this edge over here I'm just going to continue doing that for all these parts. So apply that edge and this edge. Apply that edge and this edge here. Apply that edge there and this edge over here. Apply that edge and this edge. Apply that edge and that edge there apply this edge and this edge here then I can say okay now that I've done that I can see I have those points there and then these points on the side here I'll hit control s to save my assembly I'll hit okay over here and what I can do here just to make my life a little bit easier is I could select that first object there, then holding control, I'll select this object here. I could change the appearance here on the top left to something like, um, let's see, smooth red. Then I could select this component, hold control, select that guy there, change that to something like smooth, I guess yellow. Then that component there, this component here. I'll change its appearance to something like smooth purple. Then that component there and this component here. I'll change that to something like, I don't know, pink. 
So now I have there, all four of those connectors. I'll hit Control S to save this again. And now what I'm gonna do here is I wanna move over to this environments tab over here. So the environments tab. And then again, if you guys have Inventor Professional, you will see this cable and harness environment. If not, you'll need to upgrade to professional. Okay, but here we're looking for this cable and harness. I'll select that. And then over here, it's gonna ask me, okay, create cable and harness, and then the harness name for this guy. So here it's gonna be base connector dot harness one. I could change the name there if I wanted to, and the location for this, but I'm leaving that as default. I'll just hit okay. Now this will send me into my cable and harness environment. So I can see this tab over here is my cable and harness. Now, what I can do here, is before I start creating my wires and my segments is I'm going to look at this library option over here under this manage. So library and inside library I can see over here it's using wire, it's looking for wires. I could go to cable, I could go to label, loom, miscellaneous, plugs, all of these guys here, ribbons, so on and so on. So still a whole bunch of different types over here. I'll go back to the wire. And inside the wire, I got alpha, I got Belden, I got GXL, I got generic, I got stripped, and I got default library wire. If I want to create my own standard or new wires, I can click on this button over here. That's the new button. After hitting new, I could give this a name. So I don't know. Maybe I want to create a red wire. So RD. And make that guy there RD. And then the category here, where do you want to save this into? Do you want to save this into alpha, Belden, or generic? I don't know. I'll select generic over here. Then the part number, I could change this to something like. I don't know, mm, zero, 01 RD, da, da 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 Then appearance over here, I could change it as well. So I can click on this drop down, and maybe since I've got that name there as red, I might as well make this guy here red as well. So I can hit R on my keyboard in that drop down, sends me to red, the color appears there. Then under this physical tab over here, I can change the outer diameter of my wire. I can change the core size inside here if I wanted to. And I could also change the gauge of this wire here if I wanted to. Then I also have a bend radius here. So what is the minimum bend radius this wire can go through? And then I could save that. So save, and that's gonna put that under my generic folder there. And it's going to be called RD for red. Okay. So that's how basically you create your own wires. But there are still wires inside here. So like inside the alpha, I can expand that alpha. I can see there's black. This 3047 black. Got the name there. The part number. The category. The appearance here. Glossy black. The gauge and the outer diameter. There's a whole bunch of different options inside here that you guys can look through. And if you do want to edit an existing standard, you can click on this button here, this edit button. Now this will allow you to change the standards of these. But I'm going to leave them as default and I'm just going to close this guy here. So I'll close that window there. Now, what I can do here is I actually want to add wires to each one of these components here. So red to red, yellow to yellow, purple to purple, and pink to pink. So how I can do that is I can go over to the left hand side here. It's got this creates panel. Today we'll only be creating wires and we'll only be creating segments. 
and we'll also be going through this root option here as well. So I'll click on this create wire and then over here I can give my wire a name so the wire ID I could call this wire ID here that I guess I'll call this guy here red connector or red connecting wire then inside here it's looking for where or what standard am I using I can use I guess I'll use this Belden I'll go into the drop down here and I'll create a red wire this 9916 red I'll select that I could view the properties here if I wanted to I can see there the name the category the, the appearance the gauge and so on and so on I can hit OK and now what it's looking for is the first pin and the second pin we created these pins here on these parts earlier so I can select that pin over there and I can go to this pin here but if I hover over this point here I cannot click on that point it will not let me it has to go to a pin that's why I first enabled that harness after connecting that point there and this point here I can hit apply then I'll select my yellow connector the first holes there apply purple connector apply the pink connector apply now I'm going to change this this name over here I'll change that guy to something like let's say blue so I just scrolled up a bit and there's blue over here it's a 9916 blue I'll select that I'll go from that point there to that point there apply that point and this point here apply that point there that point there apply and then finally pink to pink right click apply now that I have all of those I'm just going to close this create wire window now all these wires here they're all just preview so just a straight line going across I could select all of them using control to select all my wires I could then right click and then after right clicking I can say display as rendered if I turn on this display as rendered it's going to actually generate some physical geometry between those wires there or between those points over there or I could just select those guys again and I could right click turn off this display as rendered and all I'm seeing here is a preview now the next thing I can do here is I want to create segments because all these wires here are just going straight to those connectors so I'm going to create a segment to house my wires so on the left hand side here I have this create segment option I'll select that then what I'll do here is I'm going to be selecting that point over here in front of my red connector to that point over there in front of my other red connector that's going to create one segment going across there I can then right click I can say continue for my next segments I can choose that point over there in front of my yellow connector I'm not going to go straight across to this part here but what I will be doing is I'm going to hover over this hole I've created so on that rib there I'll hover over that edge I'll see a green point I can select that edge that's going to create a segment going straight to the center of that circle circular edge there I can right click I can say continue I can then select this yellow point there to that point there I can right click continue that yellow point there to that edge over there I can right click continue 
Now that I have all of these segments here going toward this hole here, I can choose that point there where they're all ending on. I could go over to this edge over here, select that. Then I can right click continue. That's going to create that smaller segment inside there. Then my next segment will be from that point there again, anywhere on the surface. So I can see that there's a small offset coming off that surface there, just like our tube and pipe environment. I can still right click and I can say edit offset. And this offset here, I could set to something like 20 millimeters. Okay. Now when I hover over the surface here, it's creating an offset of 20 millimeters. Then maybe if I had some objects here I'd like, I would have liked to avoid, I could just hover over the surface here. I could click on this point here and that goes straight across. Or I could place this here somewhere else. And then over here, it's just abiding by that bend radius. I'm just going to press undo here, undo, undo. I'm going to create my segment here again. From that point there, I can right click. I can say edit offset. I'll set that offset distance to 20. I can say OK. Now for this segment here, I'm just going to place this anywhere over here on that surface. Now that I have that there, let's say my first segment, I want to go to that point there. Then I can right click, continue from this point here to that point there. Right click, continue that point there to this point over here. Right click, continue. And that creates those segments there. I could then right click again and I could say finish. So now I have one segment there, three segments on the inside, then another segment on the inside of this hole, then one on the outside, one there, one there, and one there. So what I can do here is I want to have my wires running through these segments. So I can use this root option. So I can select this root button there. I can select my wires, so the red wire and the blue wire. Where is it going to? I don't have a starting segment and I don't have an ending segment. I only have one single segment. So I'll turn on that option there and I, then I can just click on this first segment here to have, make sure that's active. And I can select my segment here. Then I can hit OK. Now these wires here run into those segments. And then again, I'll do the same thing to these objects here. So I can say root. I can select my wires. This wire over here. Then I can say the first segment this wire is going into, so these two wires here for the yellow connectors, is going to be this segment there. Then the last segment segment they're going into is this segment over here. Apply. This wire then runs through there, goes into the corresponding segments, and then comes out that side there. Then again, I can select my wires. So the purple wires this time here, I can say first segment, this segment here, last segment will be this segment over there. Apply. Again, it's automatically running through all those segments. The last guy here for the pink object, I can say my first segment segment is this guy here, and my last segment is this guy over here. Then I can hit OK. Now what you'll notice is these wires here, well this segment here is relatively small, so are these segments here. But where these three segments run into another segment there, it's going to increase in radius. because of the size of my wires. So if I go into my library, and I go into Belden, and I look at this blue wire here, 
I can see the outer diameter is 2.337 millimeters. So that size there will increase from those wires. And then if I'd wanted to over here, if I wanted to see my rendered wires, another way I could do that is just instead of me having to select every single wire manually, I could then go under this display here. I can say render display. And then over here, I can see my wires. These wires running into that guy there. Those wires running into this guy. Those wires into there. And so on and so on. Going into those different segments. Now, the next thing we can look at over here is how to unroute wires. So to unroute them is as simple as clicking on this unroute button here. I could either choose individual wires, so this wire here and this wire here, and I could hit all segments as well. So wherever these wires go, just unroute them across all my segments, apply. That takes those wires out. Or I can just say all wires and all segments, and I could hit OK over here. That removes all my wires from all the segments. And then another nice option is I could also run this automatic route over here. I can, instead of me choosing my individual wires, I can just say all unrooted wires, I can hit OK. An automat and then Invent is going to start thinking, and then it's automatically routing all my wires. So these wires here will go to the closer segment, those wires there go to their closer segment, and so on and so on. And that runs that automatic route. And now the next thing I can look at here is I can click on nail board over here. This will show me my nail board or generate a nail board view for this object. So I can select that nail board. I can select standard IDW. I can hit OK. Then this will pull in my nail board for these wires. I'm not too happy with the size here. So I'm just going to hit finish sketch here because it always sends you into the sketch environment. If you want to do edits such as maybe you want to change the angle for these wires here or you want them. So I'm just going to select this wire or that point there. I can right click or I can just move these points around to wherever I want. And maybe I'm unhappy with the angle I've now created. I'm just going to select this here and I'm going to say fan in or fan out. So all I did here was just select that point there, right click, I can choose whether it's fanning in or I can select that point there, fan out. Then I can choose an angle that they're fanning out by. So 90 degrees or 20 degrees and so on and so on. I can hit OK. Then now these objects here are fan out by 90 degrees. I can verify this by using something like dimension. That point there to this point here to that point over there. I can see that's 90 degrees. And any other wires here. So if I had four wires, they'd be distributed along that 90 degrees. Then I'm just going to say finish sketch over here. And I'm not too happy with the scale of this nail board view here. I can still, after saying finish sketch, I can still hover over the edge of this, click and drag to move this around. Or I can then now double click on the edge of this nail board. And I can change the scale down to something like, maybe I want this 0.6, so 60% of its current size. Enter. Now that fits into my sheet a lot better. Now that I have that, what I could then do is maybe I actually want to add some dimensions. I want to see how long is this segment here? How long is that segment there? What is this line or what is this wire here made out of? What is its gauge? What is its name? And so on and so on. So to get that kind of information, I'd have to hit this edit button over here. So I'll send you into a nail board tab. Because right here, I still have base or well, place views. And I still have this nail board tab there. Inside that nail board, I could select edit. 
and then I can just move myself from sketch instead of saying finish sketch here I'm just gonna go straight into this nailboard tab here and then over here I'll have my harness dimension and then over here I can say from that point there to this point here what is that dimension I can click to place that from that point there to this point here what is that dimension and then another thing I could do inside here is maybe I want to see the properties of specific wires segments cables and so on so I can go to that property display the objects what do I want to display maybe I want to see this wire here so that wire there and this wire here I want to see maybe their class or maybe I want to see their color core size gauge length so on and so on wire ID but in this case yeah I'm just gonna say maybe I just want to see my color and for me that would be it for now so I just want to see the color and then the value here I could either see just the color value or I can see the name and the value for color and you can still go in and select multiple categories by holding control but in this case here I just want the color for now I'll say okay then this wire here that's where it begins and this is where it ends so I can place that down over here then I can see here the color is dark blue for that guy there and the color for this segment here is red I'm happy with that I can still say property display I want I want to display the properties of this segment here that I can see maybe I want to see the diameter for that segment and I want to see the length for that segment then I can say okay and I can place that there so now I can see here's my diameter and then, then here is my length and so on and so on once I'm happy with that I can say finish sketch and that gives me my object over here and that is basically it for the cable and harness environment